Dobrý, good morning. We are colleagues uh, starting the next day of our conference. I'm going to space photonics, to space sciences. Uh, there is some uh, some game and some competition uh, amongst our rectors in, in Latvia. Yesterday, Alvis Brasma, he has his index 71, and I am promoting him to become uh, university rector after one year. And I uh, and now we have occasions that Andres now has the highest index of his index among university rectors uh, above five. And now I uh, present what to you as an official person, as rector from universities, but particularly very directly connected to space. It's really practically space, Lenspils University College. And you are welcome, Andres. So, official person. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Arnold. I didn't know that I have a highest. Okay. I have not checked the yeah, yeah, you are age index. So, leader, uh, absolutely leader. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm really happy if the next rector of Latvian University will be the higher <laughs> I think it's just great. Okay, so Arnold asked me just to say a few words here. Uh, maybe a few things. So I have moved to Latvia now only three weeks ago. So I have started my work. Uh, I'm really fresh. I have been for 30 years in Sweden. So, and I think connection of Photonica with Sweden is really strong. This is something I have learned here. So Sweden has been really key player for uh, for uh, keeping Photonica going, for collaboration, even for uh, even helping in different ways. So I think that's really nice. I'm not sure I will be able in the same way to do the same in Ventspils as, as good as you have done it here in Photonica. Uh, during the time I have, I was in Sweden working, I was working as a researcher most of the 30 years, so just writing papers most of the time and so on. But I have been following the development here. So I have, we have met with Arnold quite often and uh, I have looked after uh, how things are going in Ventspils. So, while this has been leading for some time also the Ventspils uh, Radio Astronomy Center and uh, have participated in conferences. And it, I, I have seen how really tough the situation is. And I think it is still not easy. If you look on the governmental policy and everything when it comes to education and to the research, Latvia has still a lot to go. So of course there can be nice conferences. Like unfortunately I could not be here yesterday. I was to some, uh, innovation meeting in the in the castle at the president so one can nicely talk about innovations and everything but if you do not put money into education if you do not put uh, like uh, really in the students in the phd students mm -hmm. then uh, you cannot expect i think big uh, innovation so there is still a lot of uh, things to do i hope i don't know that at least uh, coming to answers i can do also my small contribution and I am really happy that I have been involved with Photonica, also seeing uh, how things are developing at university. I myself am from university, and uh, if I look on events, Ventspils is a regional high school. And my personal view is that uh, that Latvia needs both strong center and strong regions. So it cannot be just strong strong center here. So definitely we need strong regions, including the education. And I think also that collaboration and these things is really important for science. So I really hope in the future we can keep a very close collaboration with Latvian University and also Photonica. And uh, I'm looking forward for uh, kind of contributing also to the change uh, in, a, in a sense uh, in the system. So I'm very happy to to for Photonica also having a very strong space contribute to the space uh, the space uh, side. I'm very happy about the success of the chair on space. So. This is really great, and I'm really looking forward for uh, for for the collaboration and the development in this direction. Okay, I'll you can take yeah. the uh, uh, Good morning. My name is Wald Sawat, and as like has been mentioned, uh, I was in charge uh, for radio astronomy in the Ventspils and. Uh, Within uh, 15 years, uh, I think we really made breakthrough development there. Yeah, so in a place where there was no no uh, doctoral study programs at all, and and was, I'd say, 
medium level uh, university college, which is now applied the university science. Uh, we renovated two former Soviet military uh, radio telescopes and built a new uh, new uh, 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 low frequency array uh, antenna uh, uh, also for the new uh, generation uh, telescopes and Latvia entered as a full member in a very large base interferometry network and also uh, Latvia as a country entered in Jaivarik and we did it as a second uh, second institution uh, being better as, as other research institutes here in Latvia after Institute of Organic Synthesis, which is really, really very, very top level uh, institute. So I think uh, when Arnold asked me to join to the team, I said, yes, that's uh, we can do. And I, I believe uh, that we have very good captain, we have very good team and very good uh, supporters. And I, I need to say thanks also for this Vensfels case also to Sweden, uh, Germany, uh, also to ne the Netherlands and, and the other members of the VL VL network who helped a lot. And I see here also this very uh, fruitful, very good support, very good advices and, and direct support uh, that we can uh, make similar breakthrough in photonics and also in the space area. Yeah? So sometimes small step, as you know, uh, for photonics in Latvia can be maybe a large breakthrough uh, step for, for Baltics or, or, or for, for uh, photonic society. And I have a pleasure that we have collaborated with uh, Anders uh, for, for many years. He was one of the leading uh, professors and, and leading senior researchers uh, in, in several uh, European Space Agency programs and, and achieved really good, good success in Sweden. But he is uh, back and has taken over the, the how to say, the uh, system I, I left uh, after my, my career in, in, in Ventspils. But we can expect really good breakthrough in also in this collaboration. So, on this the floor is yours for the keynote speech. And, and we, we expect very good, uh, good presentation. Okay. Uh, okay, you had the big expectations of presentation, don't have it. <laughs> Due to the lack of the time, these things take quite short time to put together. But uh, and I have been very fresh in the area, so I'm presenting university. I'm really fresh, so so I'm still learning a lot of things, especially when it comes to research and so on about the university. It is uh, related to space and astro, Venspils University, but uh, I have been working as I will show you also later as in situ space guy, and here is more radio astronomy. So this is quite different research areas. So for me also take some time to learn all the all the scientists the research groups and so on what is what is occurring in Lansfield University I, I I also I want to notice I I have a double affiliation so I'm still connected to KTH Royal Institute of Technology so because uh, I still have PhD students there so I want to keep this connection also there so I think it can be really good uh, good for the for our university and also for the future for the space development uh, at at uh, Okay, so shortly about uh, Ventspils University. So this is a campus of uh, Ventspils University. So here is everything. Here is lecture halls. Here is administrative building. Here are the dormitories where students are sitting. So everything is here in this building. So it's really compact campus. So if I compare with KTH in Stockholm, where you have five campuses in the city spread, it takes one hour from one to another. So everything is closed and it's seven minute walk to the sea. So it's just 
seven minutes and during a lunch you can take uh, your sandwich as a seashore really nice place students enjoy it a lot yes so and it's about a bit more than two hour drive from the riga so if you look on a uh, university faculties there are three faculties there is it faculty but this it faculty include both it includes uh, computer science and in, it includes electrical engineering so it, it has both directions there then it's faculty of economics and management so it's for companies and so on producing students and then faculty of translation studies so around 750 students all together so it's a small regional university so most of the students are coming from the region let's say half a bit more and the rest are coming from the rest of the country and also international students are there but uh, because it's small compact and it's really nice teaching environment so students themselves enjoy a lot uh, being there uh let's go to the infrastructure so scientifically so that was a study so scientifically the most of the research in university is done under Ventspils International Radio Astronomy Center so that's like institute under the university so this was the campus that I was showing so besides this campus then related to this radio astronomy one has also other infrastructure so there is a building all this infrastructure is located outside uh, more than 30 kilometers I think away from the city so it's far away from any, any uh, anywhere there is eight kilometers to the club closest mobile mast so it's it's quite area in all, all possible ways physically and also electromagnetically and there you have a building renovated yes in, in many of these things Wallace knows better than me because Wallace has been for many years there and I'm only two weeks there yes so here are these two antennas which have been fully renovated so not only that they have been also advanced improvements on, on these antennas for example very recently the receiver of this antenna has been improved in a way that by by correcting the secondary mirror you can have four different receivers at the primary focus so you can very fast switch between what you want to do whether you want to do for example satellite communication or you want to do radio astronomy measurements there is still also money coming in to further develop this direction so this is really really more than also way how things have been uh, and are uh, still uh, improved so these are the two radio antennas parabolic large dishes and then there is a what Waldis mentioned low far field so this is low far antennas low, low far field uh, which is also located there so outside the city um here is a bit more information about antennas yes one can see a bit better but I think this is an old picture of the previous uh, primary this receiver building now now this has been changed so that there are four four holes where the one can put the receivers and uh, here is the technical information uh, about the frequencies and so on how these uh, radio antennas are working then I want to give some flavor of the uh, things scientists are doing there so I will give a few examples which I think also are exciting so in that sense it's a selection it's not everything that is uh, going on at the university but uh, at least like flavor and which can be of interest I think to photonics uh, also team so one nice thing is that um, there is also the research grant now from the national agency here research uh, so this is about doing the interferometry measurements so these systems are sought to be to, to do very large base interferometry yes to, to be in the large networks and then do interferometry of different measurements but there is also a big advantage if one can do a short distance interferometry measurement so these two antennas the 32 meter antenna here and 16 meter antenna you can run them locally in a interferometric measurement and that's something that has been already first test uh, measurements done and that's what one has received grants to to do during the next year so uh, and in that way one can really get down the noise levels for the measurements and, uh, and do some uh, good, good measurements of uh, astrophysical measurements so that, that's a, a very interesting direction when it comes to LOFAR, it just a few months ago, there was the first pulsar observations with Irben LOFAR. So I wanted to put in this picture because this is like the online collaboration. One can see the happy faces of scientists. Yes. And here you can see the pulsar. So this is a face and this is intensity. So at, at this particular face, you can 
see how the pulse are is emitting radio waves. So very nice application of the law for studies, and I understand the happiness of the researchers. Uh, Masers is one of the very important directions for for these research studies. So so the institute is also a member of Maser monitoring organization. So here one can see the the members of this monitoring organization. Here one can see also the development of sign how 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 it evolves because the organization as I understand is expanding so one can get more and more observations. So really focus on this research of flares in this case maser flares so you can see water masers and methanol lasers so starting from 2017 so in the past six years how the number of flares reported is not only linear one can see even trend a bit expanding more because more members i think are coming into organization so there is the really interesting uh, way direction to go so you really look for this time uh, time domain structure so really flares in the maser emissions this is a picture from uh, Illustrating how an accretion disk, say, by studying masers, you can kind of uh, almost identify the spirals in the in the accretion disk. Yes, so this is studies ongoing at the uh, institute. When it comes to maser, another interesting direction is uh, is uh, looking at the weak masers. And when it comes to the weak masers, so in this particular case, OH masers, so both looking at interstellar and cometary stuff. So it means if you take comets, for example, gas evaporating, and then there can be some weak maser emissions. This is an example of uh, observations of, of, of a star environment. Yes, yeah? so, so here one can see the velocity on x-axis and then left, right, and uh, polarization waves. But uh, what one can do is also to do exactly the same thing for comets. So look, look for this. Weak is defined in this case as masers which has emission less than one Jansky. Yes? So that's kind of intensity of the emission for uh, being weak. But uh, because one is going for this very weak emission, so they really, we need to have a new cryogonic receiver. So this is some work in progress. So, so, so to get really good uh, cry cryogenic uh, receiver to, to, to be able to, to get this uh, weak maser emission. So in the case of Comet, uh, it would be the UV solar photons, yes. Which are uh, which are exciting these OH molecules and then they cascade back to ground state lambda doublet and that's what you are trying to observe these weak OH uh, masers. Mm -hmm. There is some other interesting stuff going on. So one interesting uh, direction is at least that one tries to observe the same things with different instrumentation, with <laughs> different wavelengths. So in this case, this is AGN's. Uh, observations both simultaneously in radio and in optics yes so the same object so so and for radio this is the collaboration with ukraine so latvia ukraine and i think maybe also slovakia is involved there so you have both uh, radio radio antennas in ukraine and latvia and you have also optical observations both in latvia and ukraine so the same object that you have there is a possibility to observe in both optical stuff and in the radio and that's and in that way you can uh, obtain much more uh, information and physics and what is important again here similar to what i showed before with maser flare so you look not only for the picture itself but you look really for the time variations of the stuff so you go and check for what kind of physics things are varying on different time scales when you look in radio and in optics and you try to understand what is going there um another very strong direction this is more simulation work where one is working this is astrochemistry so this is not directly related to these antennas but one do, does the numerical simulations and for example in this case there are studies about interstellar dust grains what is the effect of cosmic rays on them and when you have cosmic rays you are heating interstellar dust grain and then depending on the temperature of the of the dust grains you can have a different uh, in te uh, different uh, density of the gases different type of gases out in, in the environment yes in, in the interstellar space so that's a that's a work that is uh, numerical simulation works that is actively going on uh, in the university another uh, uh, very interesting direction what what is studying this is the solar physics and uh, because with these radio antennas, uh, both with LOFAR and uh, and with uh, dishes, you can observe the sun. 
and sun is the closest star so you have really good intense measurements and then you can start to understand what is going on in the solar atmosphere and here on the right you can see just a picture of the sun you can see a big magnetic field lines what different kind of processes can occur in solar atmosphere but uh, what uh, scientists in this case have concluded based on the measurements of uh, of the of the sun is that uh, looking at the places where you have uh, sunspots or you have strong magnetic fields so here if you look on the solar picture the black and white color that is how strong is magnetic field there yes and in which direction it is uh, whether it's outward or inward towards the sun so uh, and the sun is sending out a solar wind and there is still not clear why there are two types of solar wind statistically more or less so there is a fast solar wind and the slow solar wind and then uh, the slow solar wind uh, one believes it has to do quite a lot with this equatorial plane with regions like with the, related to the strong magnetic field and in this case scientists can take these magnetic pictures they can model the magnetic field and try to see where these slow solar wind uh, places are mapping to and they're suggesting that it is uh, mapping to these, like here, for example, like some dark coronal corridors that they call. These can be the regions where the slow solar wind is coming from. Yes, and this is based both on magnetic field measurements and on radio measurements. I will show in the next slide. So this, at the bottom, these are measurements by radio antennas. In this case, it is not Irben's radio antennas. It's another one, but it's exactly the same type of uh, radio antennas that have done the measurements. So by combining radio measurements which are coming from a plasma in solar atmosphere with the magnetic field measurements from the solar surface you can start to model the solar atmosphere what is magnetic field what is the temperature density of the plasma and how things are uh, how, how things are evolving there and trying to understand what where exactly solar wind is coming from what is very interesting i think in this case is that uh, <clears throat> these are remote observations of the sun <clears throat> But now we are having satellites which are coming closer and closer to the sun. So the closest satellite to the sun now, Parker Solar Probe, that NASA launched in 2018, it is already approaching the distance which is 10 solar radian, which means we are starting to approach the distance, distances where we can start to connect in situ measurements from the satellite, what it is observing there, with like remote radio measurements of the sun uh, uh, in the atmosphere be below the satellite. So it really becomes really interesting of where the in situ measurements and radio start to meet. So I think that is in the next years, it's definitely going to be a, a, in a science, a very productive, I think, region in a, in a way that one tries to connect distant radio measurements with a local in situ measurements, seeing, okay, what solar wind I observe locally with the satellite, what is sun doing remotely based on radio, optical, and so on measurements. So I, I think that's really future in that sense very strong uh, uh, discoveries to be expected in that area uh, if we go further uh, I wanted also to show <clears throat> because I'm <clears throat> coming from KTH and I want to keep the connection with Ventspils also in the space directions just a few words about the groups that I was leading until a few weeks ago so that is a, a, at KTH where I was working. It's a division of space and plasma physics. So we, ha we, we have a small division for uh, KTH University. It's uh, a bit more than 20 people that is involved, but there is a lot of students involved, master students, bachelor students. And it, it, it has two, two directions. There is a space physics group and there is a complex plasma group. Space physics group is working with in-situ spacecraft, building instruments, analyzing the data. I will show you more which kind of satellites we have there. It's also involved in building the rockets, sounding rockets. So sounding rockets are rockets you launch, it goes up and then it just falls down. So you just do measurements for a few, few minutes and then it falls down. There are also scientists who are studying uh, space using the space telescopes. So for example, Hubble telescope looking on the moons, on the outer planets and trying to understand uh, for, for example OH as yes, a source of uh, uh, source of source of water or 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 molecules re related to that so that's a space physics group and then there is a complex plasma group which is lo looking on more 
tokamak related stuff and uh, plasmas in laboratory so both doing numerical simulations also looking on plasma interaction with the walls how plasma can melt the walls and so on so quite quite wide range of uh, interests and scientists doing the research when it comes to hardware in space we have satellites uh, in space such as cluster oh no I lost some picture but okay no 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 it's everything we have cluster for example for 23 years in space so multi multi-point measurements out in the space doing the plasma physics MMS where we have built instruments this is NASA spacecraft also multi-spacecraft we have done a payload for solar orbiter which is another spacecraft from ESA going closer to the sun trying to study the solar wind we have also payload on Bepi Colombo that's a mission towards the Mercury in, in a few years 2025 in December it will arrive to Mercury and then it will uh, deploy all the payload and we will observe uh, space plasma observations from Bepi and now just a few days ago yes uh, JUICE was launched uh, on the way to Jupiter so it will arrive 2031 so studying the space plasma around the Ju in a Jupiter system and at the end also Ganymede moon and then we are working a lot with the uh, rockets so there is this is the last rocket that we launched a few years ago and we are already working on a next rocket uh, which, which is also sending out it's throwing out small units and doing multi-point measurements so it's a quite a lot of different uh, data set I I wanted uh, to show a, a bit at least two slides about my own research just, just uh, because I like it so <laughs> the next few slides is about what particular I have been doing so this is just like an overview picture in a sense to get a feeling so this is a sketch of the earth's magnetosphere and in this sketch you can see magnetic field lines and the color shows the temperature of the plasma that you have so all the space is filled with the plasmas and if you go from a solar wind which is called a few thousand degrees of, of, of plasmas and if you go all the way into the earth's magnetosphere plasma gets to the temperatures of 100 million degrees so here if you're down here flying with the satellites it can be 100 million degrees for 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 ions electrons are usually colder so my research very much has been related to understanding these processes which are driving these very huge temperatures of the plasma one of such processes is reconnection so out in the tail you can have so-called magnetic reconnection process where energy in magnetic field is converted into the plasma and because here you can have really good vacuum so you can have densities as low as 0 0.1 particle per cubic centimeter so when you have a lot of energy in magnetic field convert into particles then these few particles get a lot of temperature yes so you easily get this these temperatures which are the tens of million degrees and closer coming to us also 100 million degrees during this process you can create huge plasma jets so you can create jets which are moving with velocities of thousand kilometers per second which are moving up there these jets are generating for example currents which along the field lines come down to the earth and these are the places where you observe aurora so this is northern lights that you have seen and i think there is really good hunters of aurora in latvia so all those processes of aurora they really go and map back to the tail yes so the processes here really drive the currents which are generating our own so that's that has that is my interest in research so a lot of research that i have done is related to these processes of energy conversion in these plasma processes in magneto tail also at the shock and in other places and here i want to show some data from one of my last papers this is the I'm looking on electron energization in these reconnection jets. So uh, just to show you some how it can look in real data, these are data from uh, ESA cluster spacecraft. So let's look at this panel. So spacecraft are somewhere out in the tail, and you can see the ion velocity. Yes, and there is velocity around a few hundred kilometers per second. And then in this place, it goes well above thousand kilometers per second. So some localized region where you have really huge velocities of the plasma. If you look on a third third panel this is the energetic electrons so these are the energies again time and you can see that in a place where you have these huge jets uh reconnection jets that's also the place where you have this really energetic electron so then because you have four spacecraft and you can go to these very narrow areas where you have the highest energy fluxes and by having four spacecraft you can try to understand why do we get these really high energy electrons try to understand those processes that's that's kind of physics that really 
I am I personally fascinated about so in this in this particular case we were doing the study and we discovered that uh, the highest energy electrons are related to some kind of localized uh, flux ropes flux tubes where this electron gets highest energy so it's kind of non nonlinear structures but uh, there are other uh, exciting uh, results but I, I just wanted to show at least something from my own uh, work Another mission which maybe is interesting from photonics point of view, the last, uh, the latest Swedish satellite. So this is really Swedish national satellite built in Sweden, instruments from Sweden. Uh, it, it's a bit smaller than washing machine. It's around 50 kilos. So uh, it looks like this, yes. And it's flying uh, at a few hundred kilometers in a circular orbit and it's purely optical satellite. So it's looking on a atmosphere like from the side. So as in this picture, yes, you can see how in this picture is. And it is looking on atmospheric waves and noctilactant clouds. In a movie that you see here, one can also see a bit aurora in between there is coming, yes. But the the goal really is mesospheric air glow and aerosol tomography and spectroscopy, yes, so with, with this mission. So this is the optical, uh, how it is looking like. Our group has, has, has done the CCD sensor part uh, for this spacecraft. And there, there is, there are at least some students which are already looking on the data from this spacecraft are in, involved in that uh, research. Um, another interesting thing I think which uh, uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, because it's KPH, there is a lot of students. And here is the same. Here is, for example, Latvian University, a lot of students. So one nice thing that I find about uh, at least KPH University is this involvement of students in the project. And one nice project related to the space is uh, so-called REXUS, a rocket experiment for university students. And in this case, if you if you do a rocket experiment for university students, this is a project run by Sweden, but it is run by Sweden together with Germany. So this is German space agency, Swedish space agency. It's also involves Swedish space corporation. It also involves ESA. So <clears throat> it means that all the countries, and in, I think in this case also Latvia, would be possible if there is some student teams which want to fly, uh, which want to fly some uh, <coughs> rocket module. Sorry, <clears throat> on a sounding rocket, they can apply and compete. And rocket module, it means here, for example, you can see one rocket module. Yes, so there are several rocket modules. The sounding rocket is shooted up, and then you can do some experiment. So what the student uh, student teams do, they suggest some experiments they want to do. So then different countries compete. And if you're selected, then you go during 18 months through this kind of process of conceiving, designing, implementing, and operating. Yeah. So why I wanted to bold this thing here. Oh, thanks a lot. When it, when it comes to educational part of engineers it's really a very strong and important concept i think and uh, many universities ha have also joined this initiative that it's important in a education include uh, include uh, the project work where students really go through all the process from the idea to the final product to 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 operating it uh, that that's the so-called cdio uh, initiative conceive design implement operate and this is a typical project which, which follows this approach through, through 18 months. It involves students from very different programs. It can be physicists, aerospace engineers, mechatronics, yes, computer scientists. They work in a team and they go through all this process because it is supported also by ESA. So during this time, they go, for example, to, <clears throat> to, to some report or training to ESA, maybe some of the students and so on. So there is different elements involved. So at KTH at least have had already like during past 10 years, I think 10 teams like this uh, where students are, are, are building this uh, such rockets and launching. And uh, this maybe can be interesting also to think about. I, I don't know, maybe it's already is done. I still don't know, but doing something like that also in Latvia, if one has a team, I think there is quite good opportunities, at least one way how moving in, in that direction. I think it's interesting. Um, oh. Finally, <laughs> I have just two slides uh, I wanted. Oh, sorry. It doesn't work. Sorry, that was a YouTube movie, but it doesn't work. I, I, I wanted to show the last building which has been blown up in Ventspils. So uh, as well as said, it's a old military place. 
So this is the place where a lot of new stuff has been built, uh, which has been rebuilt, but there is still a lot of old stuff which is there. So this is a place where the old stuff is blown up and the new stuff is built continuously still, yes. So this is a really nice movie of uh, from YouTube where one can see the last uh, building that was blown up. It's a... Uh, hmm? It's through YouTube. Ah, oh, maybe I can click on a link. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, just uh, because this is done by Latvian army professionally, because this building is quite well. This should know. Yes, this is quite. Uh, <laughs> this is quite. Uh, maybe while you can comment more, I think you know more history on. on yeah, in, in Soviet time, it was a really secret uh, intelligence uh, technical uh, building. Uh, so, <laughs> so it's a good good uh, good shots <laughs> and, and <laughs> yes yeah, so so it's not a trivial thing because this building, uh, this building, as I understand, was built really safe because this was really K KGB. Yes, all this communication uh, uh, officer is there was like uh, differences even from a building point of view, security levels and so on. So it's quite a good, I think, professional work of uh, the guys blowing up this thing. So. We still need the money to to take away all the stuff which is on there. So there is uh, uh, the use another bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that's that's something that uh, that I think is one of the really big challenges for Latvia and also for such a place as as Irban. And this is uh, finding the right uh, funding mechanism uh, because this is really advanced and big uh, infrastructure, scientific. We are we are really wel welcome everybody to use it. I mean, uh, from university, from technical university, but the model of funding it is still kind of in, in there. It has been troubles through all these years, and we have not yet still settled on some really good uh, funding and money for this uh, such a national big infrastructure. That's that's a problem. And my final slide, uh, just about the city. So this is given by my. Uh, marketing uh, people so when still city where you think about tomorrow so and uh, what i wanted to say is that it's really nice place so definitely you're all welcome if you want to do some uh, as you saw the campus it's a really nice place also if you want to do some conference or something like that and if you come and work and if you want to think about future in the science you can send all your family to all the attractive places that you have in, in ventspils while, while you are thinking about the uh, science for for future yeah so thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I think we, we have an opportunity to ask maybe one two questions if, if there are. I don't see. Ah, I'm not. You measuring ions density is about one thousand ions in cubic centimeter. No, this example, for example, here that I was showing. Very, very low density. No, no, <laughs> here I didn't show, sorry. Here I didn't show the density, I think in this plot. And here I showed only, oh, here is the density, yes. So here one can see the density at the bottom. So here we are talking about density 0 0.1 particle per cubic centimeter. Oh, yeah. These are, these are the regions, so the lobes of the, the lobes of the magnetosphere, this is one of the best vacuums you can have in the near Earth space. Because the solar wind, when it's blowing, it has blown past. So here it practically no plasma. Unless there is a plasma outflow, then it can be a bit more. But otherwise you can have you can have even 0 0.01. Yeah, sometimes, yes. No, that's it. It's really low. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, I, I I would like also maybe to introduce uh, C uh, Professor Rubinevskis, who was mentioned here as also a name uh, as one of the authors of the solar investigation. Just raise a hand that if there might be some further 
discussions, it would be good to talk also to you. Yeah. Okay, and uh, there has been also some uh, joint research uh, going between optical observatory in Baldwin and and Ventspils. Uh, I don't know, but but uh, I, I think you uh, maybe are not. Ready I am not to yet. Talk uh, about yes, 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 yes. Opportunities, but I think there are challenges about this. Here was uh, the yes. conference to say about this. Ah, okay. okay, so this, this was this, yeah, slide uh, Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then uh, if, if there is no maybe, uh, questions now, uh, that we can leave them for uh, informal, uh, maybe environment and